All right, so I think we can go ahead and get started. All right, so uh, you should be in the presentation uh, view section. If you're in the wrong room, feel free to uh, exit. So um, what do we do when we need to store some data and provide a fancy display for our end users? Uh, say we have a company with information about employees, and that company wants a directory display on their website. Well, maybe it's not for a company at all, but instead a supervillain named Felonius Gru. So it seems like a fitting client, as most of mine act like supervillains from time to time. So if you're familiar with Gru, you'll know the infamous minions that help him carry out his evil bidding. And uh, Gru has assigned his minions tasks, and through these tasks, uh, they inherit job titles. And as a web developer, it's our job to create a presentation of this data. So today we'll uh, demo a solution for this and I'll share a modular reviews concept I call Viewception. So good morning, uh, my name is Brandon Ratzloff. You can communicate with me at Brandon Ratzloff on Twitter. I am a lone uh, Drupal developer for a conference management and event planning company. I have uh, nearly seven years of Drupal uh, site building experience. I started uh, working on a content management system called Joomla. Might be familiar. Uh, at one point, I was looking for a solution to sell video subscriptions. A uh, friend of mine pointed me to Drupal 6. I found a Ubercart node <coughs> access module. And from the vague module description, it seemed like the adequate solution. So I found Drupal had a much higher learning curve but thanks to the uh, amazing Drupal community, I got to where I am today. Uh, for example, I can give myself a fancy title like Site Solutions Architect. So as a Drupalist, I've uh, come to the conclusion that I'm supposed to know it all. And honestly, when dealing with clients, I do have to know it all. So when site building, try to know it all and uh, know it all the Drupal way. So the goals for this session we're going to be uh, think more deeply about your content structure. Uh, content is stored in the database, so think like a database administrator. And I'll help you expand your views toolbox. We'll review a few uh, modules, give us more flexibility and functionality. And we'll help take control of the duplicate results in views. So why views returns duplicate results and propose a solution. And I'll share a modular views concept and we'll explain how to break our views into pieces and then recombine them. So again this morning, I will, I'll review a little about relational databases and data modeling, why uh, relationships are necessary and how they complicate data removal. We'll look at a different approach to displaying content through modularity in views. I'll perform a live demo on combining multiple views to gain ultimate control. So we're going to stay 100% in the user interface today, so plan accordingly. Uh, so let's put a few things into perspective and talk a little bit about this data modeling. So in a database, uh, tables are used to organize different types of content. The complexity of the content sometimes uh, requires us to organize the data into parts. And these parts become separate tables in the database if uh, different types of data relate to one another, you can connect them. And these are called relationships. A table's given relationship to another is referred to as its cardinality. Uh, these relationships might be a one-to-one, -one, a one-to-many, or even a many-to-many. -many. A one-to-one relationship might be an uh, employee to their name or a minion to their photo. And a one-to-many relationship could uh, be a department to their various employees or a minion to their assigned tasks. So has anyone ever seen the Drupal's entity relationship diagram? Hands? Yeah? Some? Uh, this, is a, this is a picture of Drupal 7's database uh, tables. So every box here is referred to as an entity table and, <clears throat> and the lines represent the relationships of cardinality. Uh, I might note this is without any additional content types or fields added. Uh, it's vanilla Drupal. 
So as you can see, a data model can get very complicated. <coughs> uh, so why review these modeling basics? Uh, because uh, creating content types and adding content is a form of data modeling. And Views looks directly into your database to create its displays. So when creating content types, the Drupal user interface reacts with the database and does all the grunt work. Uh, Drupal works very well as a data modeling tool. The bottom line is to know every time you create a new content type or a field, you're actually building tables in your database with these relationships. So here's just an example of a data model, maybe with uh, Drupal terminology. And then we can see how that data model might be translated into human readable terms. Uh, so how do we get the data out of this database we've been designing? So we use a language called SQL, Structured Query Language. It allows us to interact with the database, and we use CRUD operations, which are create, uh, read, update, delete, right on our database. So we can write uh, select statements to select and retrieve our data. If we have multiple tables uh, relating to one another, we can use join statements to bring them together. Uh, it can take extremely complicated queries to get the data we need. So uh, I found this image <laughs> lurking on the internet. I, I was not aware until this time you can uh, write a six-page query, apparently. Uh, so yeah, if this is your idea of fun, we probably won't have a lot in common. <laughs> uh, but enough of this uh, SQL uh, data modeling junk, let's uh, get down to business. So what is Views? Views is a query building and inspection tool. So it allows you to create a page, a block, or attachments, uh, displays right out of the box. It uses render plugins uh, to output various different types of markup. So a large majority of your database is available through Views as long as it uses the entity system. Uh, from the module page, it does say you need Views if, and it lists some common reasons. Uh, I propose we say anything worth doing requires Views. Uh, views, however powerful, still requires you to know uh, what you're building. And so a quick overview of what Views does do for us. Uh, when adding a new view, we're starting our select statement in the query. So through the add new view screen, we start by choosing our base table. Uh, it will allow us to set up some filters, uh, like the type of content. Uh, these are actually where clauses in our query. And this page will also give us a sort order, which is order by clause, and then finally uh, the number of results perhaps, uh, which is the limit clause. So with these options selected, we've actually built a full query and uh, views can use it to render our content. Uh, some of you may not be aware, but you can actually inspect your query directly in the preview section. I don't think this is set up by uh, default. Uh, for this, you can change your view settings and that's available at admin slash structure slash views slash settings. And I do advise you take a look at this page uh, there are many tools that can help your mastery of views. So one way to help you understand the views interface uh, is to split it into parts. So one for formatting a display and the other uh, for how to select and filter your query. As shown in yellow, we can see our selected fields, relationships, and contextual filters. And then blue uh, shows us the type of page, uh, block, or attachment so the type of display, and also the markup formatter uh, and other page settings. So now we're pretty much ready to build our view. We know all these things. So looking back in our slides, here's a refresher on the data model we've designed. And a quick uh, diagram showing the relationship between our minions, uh, their jobs and tasks. <coughs> Sorry, there's a little typo there. Uh, you may expect this model to be uh, to complicate your views uh, results. And so a common problem when querying data models like this are uh, duplicate results. So if we try to select every minion and his tasks, we've actually joined our one-to-one -one fields, the photo and name with our one-to-many, 
uh, like the tasks and job titles together. So when we print our results row by row, we'll get a multiplying factor on our fields, generally one set of minion fields for every term. So some solutions might be uh, aggregation. Uh, it tries to combine all the common fields, and it's kind of applied to all parts of the view. Uh, I think it seems a little clunky, and it doesn't give the control I'm after. Uh, also, there's a setting in the query settings uh, called distinct, and by definition, it's meant to display only different or distinct values from a table. Uh, it'll only work in specific use cases. Uh, so a module I'm not going to demo today but deserves honorable mention is uh, Views Distinct. And uh, Views Distinct is intended uh, to assist in the removal of duplicates on individual fields. Uh, it provides aggregation or filtering options uh, per field in your view. So it's worth taking a look at. So if not for these more common approaches, then, then what? Well, viewception, obviously, right? So viewception, a modular views building concept that provides full control over each level of your view. It leverages the help of views field view module to embed views as actual fields. So our goal with this uh, concept is to build each view out to provide uh, just the necessary results and then recombine them. So in, in a demo I'm about to do, uh, I will go ahead and uh, build three different views. It's going to be one for the, the minions themselves, one for the job titles, and one for our, our tasks. So then we'll combine them into one display like is illustrated here. So that's all I have for the slides, and I'm going to try to see if I can't change my display here and get the correct thing showing on the screen for you guys. All right, so we all should see uh, the Minion Directory website here. Is that what we're seeing? Okay, so I've, I've pre-made a few things in uh, this website for us to, to move us along. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is... Uh, Whenever you're creating anything, of course, you want to prepare your content. Um, so you want to get, gather your, your content types. And, and if you have taxonomies, you want to get those in order. Um, be, a, be a forward thinker, I guess, when, when designing these type of things. So the first part of this I've actually set up is a taxonomy with, uh, with jobs. And this uses a hierarchical structure. So this is something you may or may not uh, normally run into, but I wanted to show this because it's kind of an advanced way, I guess, to deal with these type of hierarchies. So in this case, I've actually uh, done something where you've got your job titles on top and then perhaps the tasks underneath, so it's a parent-child relationship in that way. Jump over here. So then I've uh, gone ahead and created created the content type minion. Uh, I've just changed the title field here, uh, the label to name, so no big changes there. Added uh, a photo field and perhaps what a minion loves, uh, just to add a little bit of flair to our minions themselves. And then I've gone ahead and uh, used a term reference field, which is pretty common, to actually build that relationship between my minions and uh, that vocabulary of uh, the different jobs. And so just to kind of preview what I'm going to put together for you today, uh, we should end up with a display with something like this. So there's actually three views 
different views working here and they're all embedded together. So I know demos are uh, sometimes looked down upon, but I'm going to, to go through this and I think we're going to be successful, so no worries. <laughs> and just in case, I've got them all pre-made so we can just look at them if we want. <laughs> All right, so the actual, uh, the first view I want to make is going to be uh, for my minions themselves. Make sure that's what I actually want to do. Look at my little demo outline here. <clears throat> okay, so I'll just give this a quick name. And for this, we're actually jumping uh, right into the content tables. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and use a filter for minion, and I don't care about how it's sorted. And I'm not actually creating a page because this particular view is going to be embedded, so I'm just going to create a block. And so I can continue and edit that. First thing I want to make sure of uh, is that all of my items do display. I don't need any limiters on this. I don't like that that's actually a default in views, but I do understand. So I'll change uh, the format settings. I like to use a module that enables semantic views. It just gives you a better markup results. And then we're actually going <clears> to <throat> choose to use uh, show actual fields here, so we're not using any view modes or anything like that. So in the fields, I really I just want the title. I'm going to go. I'm going to want the photo and then uh, what a minion loves, so we'll just add those really quick. <coughs> Manipulate a few of the settings, we don't need any of the labels. Uh, formatter for the loves is just fine, it's just a plain text field. Remove the uh, label for the image. Got some pre-designed uh, image style here, I think that's actually default. I'm going to copy in some classes that I have to make everything look a little bit better. <clears throat> All right, so once uh, once we do have those standard fields, that, those are like I said the one the one to one uh, type of fields. I'm going to rearrange these real quick. I actually want the photo on top. I'm going to add that relationship to its, to its jobs or to each minion's uh, uh, tasks here. So I can just go through the content, add the, uh, the content jobs uh, field there. So I'll get that term reference uh, connection. And what I want to build here is I only want the results uh, from an individual task. So I'm, I'm going all the way down the tree, and I'm, I'm going to decide uh, that if he is a dishwasher, then I, I only want to receive those minions as results. So I'm going to add a contextual filter here. Based on that relationship that I just built, opens up the taxonomy terms for me. And simply use the term ID because I'm not going to need to know this. Later on, it's going to be automatically embedded. So I will add that and hide the view if nothing is provided. And uh, then we get no query down here. I do know, I believe it's eight. Eight should give us a set of the minions that actually are the dishwasher. So we have three results there. There's no titling of the terms or anything like that. That's exactly what I want. So I can go ahead and save this particular view. And I'm going to add now my tasks. For this, we're going to start directly in the taxonomy table and go ahead and filter out based on our, on our jobs. And again, this is just going to be a block because it will as well be embedded. So we'll continue and edit that. I'm going to remove um, or go ahead and display all of those as well. And here I'll just use the semantic views formatter again. Uh, and the key is, of course, we want to get the fields printed in here. 
So at this point, we are looking at receiving all of our sub, we want to try to get all of our subtasks. And we can see that we've really just queried all of the tasks uh, on an equal level. So Mad Scientist no longer has its, its hierarchy. So here's kind of an interesting trick, and maybe you can add this to your, to your views arsenal. So how we want to go ahead and parse out the, um, the tasks instead of uh, getting the parents, we can add a relationship. And uh, this is kind of an introduction of a module. Um, <clears throat> I believe it's called views arg parent term. Uh, so write that down, views arg parent term. And so that gives you a new uh, taxonomy term, parent term relationship that I can add to this particular view. Use the identifier parent. Uh, <clears throat> and so nothing has changed at this point. We're just identifying the parent. And what I want to do with that relationship is go ahead and add a filter. And I can use uh, the ID again. And I'm going to use that parent relationship. And here I'm going to make sure that it is uh, not empty. So therefore, we know that there is a term above it. And this actually identifies that it is a sub term, so it's a child in this case. So now we know we're only getting our tasks in our hierarchy that we've created. So if I scroll down here, we see that I've now removed uh, the top job titles, as I've referred to them. So this view is done for the moment. We'll add our final view. And this is actually going to be a page view. So this is going to be the jobs themselves. Uh, and this, again, is in the taxonomy terms uh, table because it is for the job titles we're looking for. <laughs> Sorting doesn't matter, but we're actually going to create a, a page this time. Like I said, um, we'll just use the path demo minion jobs. Helps to practice this before, so it's auto filled in. Uh, here we'll use that semantic views and fields once again. I want all <laughs> everything to display there, so I don't need pager. Continue and edit that. Yeah, I apologize. I want to go back here real quick. I did want to actually test this. So if, if I put in mad scientist, for example, on the tasks view that I just created uh, and update that preview, I should get, oh, OK. So this is why demos get a little hairy. So the one last thing I did want to ask or add to my tasks view after the highlight of uh, only identifying the, the subtasks is I wanted to add a contextual filter and then only get the chosen tasks uh, that, that I actually wanted here. So I was meaning to add another contextual filter on this view. And I'm going to use that uh, parent relationship once again there. So then if I do select uh, five, for example, being a mad scientist, I do only get gadget tester and, and toxic waste dump dumper because those are the tasks of, of the job title. So I apologize for having to go back there. <clears throat> OK, so back on the, the job titles, we're just trying to get a, a full list of our job titles here. Uh, so just like on the, the previous view, we're going to want to add that parent term relationship once again with the parent identifier, get a filter in here to remove all of the uh, child terms. And so in this case, we'll use that, that parent relationship. But we're actually uh, going to make sure that it's empty, because we don't want anything uh, above it. <clears throat> so when we apply that to the display, we will end up with just our three uh, job titles as we've defined them. And so that's actually where I'm looking. Uh, kind of phase one, so I've built all three of the views. Now I actually want to take each individual one and kind of plug them into the other. And like I mentioned, uh, the views field view will allow us to do that. So I will, uh, I will start back on my uh, tasks view. And a number, all right, just doing some checks. All right, so I'm actually looking underneath, to add underneath Gadget Tester and Toxic Waste Dumper the view of the minions uh, parsed out 
by their or uh, using their taxonomy or contextual filter uh, to give me just the results I want. So what I'm going to use here is I'm actually going to add a view, and after enabling uh, the views field view module, I get this global view, and I can add this in as as a field, and it gives me a couple extra options here. And the the key th key items you want to look at is actually what view we are inserting into this field. And so in this particular case, we're on the tasks view, so I want only the minions uh, brought in here. So I'm going to um, choose my demo minion directory. And I can choose the block or master, you know, whatever uh, display you've created. And the, the key here is we can actually send our contextual filters or send a token or send any, any um, identifier we want to the other view through this. So when I apply the display, I actually don't have any changes uh, just yet because I didn't have a field to add uh, to push over to my minions view for that contextual filter. And remember, on the minions view, our contextual, contextual field was, uh, filter was actually the term ID. So in our tasks view, uh, I need to add that specific term ID to our field set here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. I don't need uh, this displayed at all. It's just to, to use in the views field. And of course, when creating your <coughs> views in this way, uh, we need to make sure if, if we're going to get uh, the tokens and such available in the replacement patterns, we need to have our fields above uh, the other field. So I'll put my term ID above my global view. That'll actually give me a replacement pattern for that term ID, which I can plug in uh, to that view field. And once I've done that, I've actually passed the taxonomy term for in each individual row of a task to the minions view. And so when I combine the, when those are combined together in this way, I should receive gadget testers, or Dave and Jerry, and the toxic waste dumper would be Tim and George. So at this point, it's just up to you to, to uh, work on how you'd actually like to display that. But you have control over each individual level that way. So I'm going to save that one. And the, the final thing I want to do is go ahead and, and basically do the same uh, to my job titles view. So knowing that I have to add the term ID here, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then add my uh, global view, field view in one more time. And on this one, I'm looking to select the, uh, the tasks view that I've created. And I'm going to use the term ID once again in the contextual filter, because that's what I'm actually passing down to that other uh, tasks view that I created. So here, we should be able to see, exclude that display. Uh, so we should be able to see now the gardener and his tasks, and then uh, the actual minions then are attached uh, to the tasks, which are then, that group is then attached to the job titles. <coughs> so I think it's a, it's a pretty cool concept. Let's go back and, and take a look at what I actually, you can actually turn this into. So the mad scientist, again, was the job title in this case. Uh, and then a sub-item, uh, the terms would be gadget tester. And then I've attached the different minions directly to gadget tester and t attached gadget tester to the mad scientist. Uh, so I'll take a quick look here at the view I just created. And... All right, so it doesn't look like the other view that I created. And again, as I mentioned, it's all up to you in styling. So this is just a lesson in uh, design, I suppose. 
I, I do have these individual items kind of blocked out. Uh, and what you're able to do once you have this configuration is go ahead and define exactly how each individual um, view that you've created does look. So if you, if you need a view within a view to look different than maybe the top view or something like that, you have that full control. So that's a, it's a really great, it's a really great way to do your views that, to gain that extra control. Uh, anybody want to actually see just what I applied to, to actually get that visual styling? Is that important to anyone? Maybe, no? Uh, okay, real quick then. So I, I've also used um, in the jobs, there's a, another module you can use, uh, responsive grid, views responsive grid, I believe. And in, I'm using a particular grid system here, so I'm able to go ahead and uh, change how many columns I want and so on and so forth. Uh, and it's, I think it's a bootstrap theme, so I'm able to apply different classes just directly to each one of the individual views so I get uh, <clears throat> the results that I'm looking for. And I'll go to my pre-made view here just so we can see that. So when I choose the responsive grid and go to my settings, I'm, I'm using two columns for the different tasks uh, and uh, some different column classes to help outline that uh, in the row and so on and so forth. So it just kind of gives you a quick example of how how much control you might gain over this actual display. So uh, that's the demo. I think it worked out. Kind of, yeah. Ooh, yeah. So really, I'm ready to uh, take any questions if you guys have any. Yeah, so the, the question is about performance. And uh, I, haven't, I haven't spent a lot of time um, analyzing that specifically. I'm running in kind of a varnished cached environment. And, and so with that, I've had no, no real issues. Uh, I will say there absolutely is, and you need to analyze that. Uh, this was pulling out five pieces of content with various fields. So we're looking at a very small example. Um, you know, if you have thousands and thousands of nodes, it, it's definitely going to be a bigger hit than, than trying to do everything in an individual query. Uh, and I'll say caching results are a little bit mixed uh, because it's a query within a query. It does, if it tries to cache one, um, you usually won't get the actual results you're looking for. So, so usually you can't use uh, full caching on, in your individual views because of that. Yeah, so views field view is the actual name of the module I'm using to, uh, it gives you that global uh, global view uh, field that you can plug in. And you can actually use that, <clears throat> I believe, directly in, in the header and footer as well. So it's another way. Right. So I'll give you a quick example. <clears throat> I have somewhere in the range of uh, four or 500 different abstracts on this particular website. And I've actually built, so all abstracts belong to multiple categories. Uh, so for this example, <clears throat> I want to be able to filter out only one category and not see the other groupings of the category. So I've actually done a view embed here. Uh, so if I was to select one category, uh, I, I only see one title even though uh, a different category might belong to category three, or sorry, a different abstract might belong to category three, for example. Um, and <clears throat> so that, yeah, that's how I use that. and. So to directly answer the question, you know, I've used four or 500 nodes in a query, um, and this loads pretty quickly, especially I'm, I'm logged in, uh, so it's just, it's just up to you to do.
kind of the testing there. Uh huh. Right. So, so it's kind of a lesson in naming conventions, I guess. Uh, yeah, and I, I struggle with that that same thing. So, for this demo, you know, I started each view with the name demo. You can actually use. Let me let me go over to a view here. So in our demo jobs, uh, if you wanted to, you can create multiple displays, and then once your view is saved, then those become accessible to the to the view field. Uh, so that's one way to organize it. I think it just makes it more confusing in in a demo case, uh, but usually that's that's something like I'll do, and then I'll also combine it with view modes itself, which is actually what I did with the abstracts, instead of making a set of fields as a view, I just use a view mode and then and, and just call on those and then embed that set of view, uh, I guess, view mode nodes into another view. Uh, I, does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, okay. Anything else? Okay. I don't, I don't know of any uh, documentation. Um, I used a lot of contextual filters, I guess, when they were arguments, right, in, in Drupal 6. So I really just try to look at them as they're another way to filter, a dynamic filter, right? So, right, right. Yeah, you could give a whole session on, on that. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I have either myself. And you know, because then you can get into, you know, dynamically writing your dynamic filters. So you could do uh, write uh, custom PHP in there and, and that type of thing. Which you know, so you have to convert your handler and this and that. So it gets kind of it gets really tricky. But sorry, I don't have any documentation for that. Uh, can you give me a follow up to a similar thing using the group by? Right. Right, so so I guess it's a good thing I gave this particular example. If I used group by and did this in a single singular view, uh, I'm querying in abstracts, like I said, with their um, categories as a field, let's say. And if I used group by, it's going to try to either, it's gonna, if one abstract belongs to two categories, it, it has both of those available to you. So the only way to get only one category to show here would be to either, uh, well, to do it this way, or you could filter or aggregate that group by result. And so that's really where the group by, I guess for me, I run into a lot of problems. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I explained that well at all, I guess. Did, did that make sense? I think so. so Yeah, I mean, group by is like, what? It's aggregating uh, on one field and then taking out it out of the display. And and uh, so if you have, if your different nodes have multiple uses of that field and it's, it's name different, it's going to have to try to combine those or display both of them. So if it's if, if one of my abstracts here belong to category 11 and 10, it, and I do a group by display, I'm going to get category 11 and 10 grouped on this display, but that's not what I want. I only want the results of, of 11 here. So, anything else? Yeah, it, it kind of comes down to how you, I guess, how you want to design that. I, I wanted to show that example so you could see that hierarchy is manageable here, but I think there's a vast number of other modules. Like, sorry, I'm not really familiar with them, but for managing hierarchy in um, 
in taxonomy itself, like hierarchical views, or I think is one, or something like that. Uh, I definitely think you could use this method. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go too far with it, but again, I use it for its strengths of being able to have uh, control over each one of those those levels. So even if I only have two levels of hierarchy, I have to make three views that way. Four would be. Uh, it, it could definitely get out of control. So I'd explore and see if it's manageable. Otherwise, try to take a different approach. Yeah? So it, I'm, I'm not 100% here, but it, it could be when you actually run, um, when you're doing a sort on a different field, that's pulling it into the query. So it might give you be giving you those duplicate results, um, just because of like this same this same problem. So um, it's, a, I guess, the view seeing that field, um, and and yeah, it does kind of blow up on that level. And I guess this doesn't worry about your duplicates, it's okay because you're filtering them out anyway through contextual filters. So it gives you the exact, uh, I guess, set of results you're looking for. And so when using sorting, it's not a, it's not a concern of like that additional, I don't know, field being there. So I think that it would, it would help. So. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I don't know if this correctly answers your question or not, but in sorting, uh, there is a views natural sort module that that might assist you in that. I know I know one of the problems you're going to have is is like is just perhaps your sorting sorting will be incorrect because of of that particular item. But I <clears throat> I can't think off the top of my head. Exactly, you're looking to, to sort the taxonomy and then the items within, no, right? Or yeah, well, maybe maybe come chat with me after and we can think think something up. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Right, right. Honestly, at the end of the day, I, I come from kind of a bad rep world where you kind of start with the simple or the more complicated or the simple. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I can't, I can't elaborate a lot, but I know, so there's like a, there's like a query hook with views, so you can just override your actual query, uh, and then send it back to your views, so it kind of overwrites it, like the same way maybe a, a template file or something like that would, so maybe look in, <laughs> into just writing that hook to call on your view, I guess, write your own query. And then maybe you can get the data back there. I'm not 100% sure how that works, but it's off the top of my head an idea. So. Anything else? Well, just to add to that, to that last 
part, would that be adding a query and then a module that you would write and then yeah. 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 Okay, right, right. Yeah, then you'd, what, you'd have to start writing your own handlers and such. All right, well, thank you so much, guys. Enjoy the rest of the conference.